Thank you so much for joining us. Today we're talking with Zandizwa Gwele. Uh, she is an entrepreneur, a business owner um, who lives here in South Africa. We're going to be talking to her. So first of all, Zandizwa, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Tim, for inviting me. And Sandeezwa, one of the reasons we're really excited to talk to you today is because uh, you own a business. It's called LNS Shuttle Services. Uh, it was founded a few years ago. Um, but also, we've been talking to one of my colleagues, Dr. Mignon Renica, and also a couple of UCT students who did research recently around um, how government funding is being used by small businesses in, in South Africa. And you were quoted in there, and you're on the, you're on the face of this. So you're working in this space with your, your company. Um, so we're really interested to get your take on it. But, but first, before we get into that, can you tell us a bit about LNS Shuttle Services, about the business? Thank you, Tim. LNS Shuttle Service is a transport and tourism company that's based in Cape Town at Philippi Village. Okay. We have nine full-time staff members. We have a fleet of seven vehicles, and um, we have been now operating for five years. And we work with corporates, tertiary institutions, and nonprofit organizations. Okay, so it's a pretty broad group of people that you're you're moving around. Um, so obviously, in the current lockdown that we've had, when we're interviewing you um, the day before we go to level four, so the stages are slightly turning a bit. Um, but obviously in the lockdown, people are not traveling as much. So this lockdown has had a huge impact on, on your business. Um, how there's a, been a bunch of different government programs, funds, uh, grants to try to support small businesses during this time. Um, what's been your experience in trying to access those funds sort of for the good and, and maybe for the bad as well? What are the challenges? The experience has been a, um, a combination of both. I think it has been um, bad in a manner that the application process takes long, so I have not had any response yet. So I'm not sure if I will get what I've applied for or not. Okay. Um, the good side of it is that um, I was able to apply because I had all the requirements that they, they were asking in application. Okay. And, and one of the things in, in the research that you were a part of was um, about the fact that you, you're fully compliant. There's some businesses that are partially compliant. So for them, it's even, it's even more challenging. Is, is, that, is that right? Yes, that's correct. When we did the research with the, with the, with the Papama students, we, we, we found out that most businesses, especially in the township, they do not comply. Not because they do not want to, because there is a lot of paperwork to be done and knowledge and skills required to get there. And also, uh, lack of resources is, is, is the big challenge for small businesses. Like, for instance, if you need to print a the application form, scan and send it, and it's a lockdown. Where do we do that? Um, how do you do it at home? So right. um, it has been a challenge. And, and are there things that the government could do differently to maybe reduce some of these challenges, make it a bit easier for both for in your space, but also for these these other entrepreneurs that you're talking about that are that are partially compliant? Are there things they can do to to speed it up, which is one of the things you mentioned was, was sort of a time lag, but also make it easier. Are there things they can do that you can think of? Yes, I think um, accessibility um, is key. And also the application process um, is, it's, 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 not, it's, it's not easy. And also communication in terms of, is it a grant? Is it a loan? If it's a loan, what are the terms and conditions? What is the interest rate? Um, and also the, the, ten, the, the turnaround time in terms of application from the day you apply and the day that um, they 
they, they, they get back to you. So um, you might find that you applied beginning of April when the whole thing started. By the time you are approved by the end of May, who knows that those businesses will still exist. I'm fortunate that I will still be um, existing then, but there are businesses that um, from Philippi Village and Kalita that we spoke to that they were crying that will I be still existing in May or in June? I do yeah. not think so. Yeah. And this has a, a been a problem globally. They've been doing all this look at uh, governments coming up with funding, which is great, but they won't, uh, people who need it won't get it for months. In which case, as you said, for a lot of these companies, especially smaller ones, that they may not be around then, which is sort of terrible that if they can get it early, they might be okay. So I think the time one is a really important bit. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about too is I mentioned before, you know, we're, we now have these different stages in South Africa um, of lockdown and in protection from the coronavirus. So we're moving to stage four tomorrow, although when people see this, it won't be tomorrow, we'll already be in stage four. Um, do you think changing to stage four rules will have much of an impact on your business or do you think that will come more with stages three, two, or one? How do you think the changes will affect you, your transportation business? Honestly speaking, for my business, stage four uh, will not bring any difference, any change in my business um, because there are still restrictions. People are still not moving. They're encouraged to work from home. Um, so it won't bring any change stage four at all. Okay. But, but you're also registered as an essential business provider. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And has that, has that helped hurt not mattered much? That has helped. And that has brought a lot of hope, um, in me going forward because now that we are moving to stage four, I am, I am hustling or hoping that businesses will need our services to transport their staff to, as, as kind of a precautionary measure for companies to take to avoid the spread of the virus so that their staff members don't use public transport and get exposed to too many people. And right. um, I'm also hoping that um, more opportunities will come but at the moment, there is nothing that I can say, this is concrete, this is, I have work now because it's stage four. There is still right. nothing um, because there's still no movement um, of people. And yeah. the key, the, the, people can't move to other provinces. And people yeah. can't even move within Cape Town. And um, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm concerned that they also, this crisis has introduced new ways of working, of doing business, and also new ways of living. So this is definitely going to affect our business. Yeah. Well, that, that actually brings us uh, sort of the final question I always like to ask people is something about predicting the future. Just, you know, not, we won't hold you to this, um, but one of the questions you, or the questions you ask in the, the article um, in Business Maverick called Billions and Billions But Not a Penny for Me, um, in that you ask, uh, what will business look like in the future? Uh, will people be traveling as they were? So I'm curious about, from your point of view, just as a guest looking into your crystal ball, uh, what do you think the future will be uh, for your business or for that the transportation or the economy? What do, you, what do you think we're coming into next? Or do you not have any idea and we'll sort of see? I still see the future uh, for LNS shuttle service because we have our current clients that have um, cancelled their bookings completely. Others have not cancelled the bookings, but they have put their programs or projects on hold. And then they're waiting for government to uplift some of the restrictions, then this movement will start happening. So I'm still positive that um, as soon as, 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 as restrictions are uplifted, there is still future for LNS shuttle service. And also, um, I'm, I'm also looking at what else can we offer um, that is needed right now for our current clients and for new clients. So I need to work on 
uh, getting new clients and um, communicate with my current clients and find out their plans for the year, their revised plans for the year. Well, look, that's super interesting and helpful, Sandy. So for giving us an insight, like I said, into people who are, who are actually working in this space. Um, so I really appreciate you doing the research side of this um, and also the business side of this um, to keep the economy going. South Africa is one of many countries that, that keeps saying we're dependent on growing the economy through entrepreneurs. Uh, we're very proud to see what you're doing as a UCT alum. Um, out there starting your own business and, and pushing the, the economy forward. Best of luck in this really difficult circumstances. Thanks so much for sharing your insights and your experience with us today and a, and a wider audience. And uh, we'll be in touch. And thanks again. Good luck. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you.